Well, I wanted to thank you for watching our YouTube channel and for those of you supporting our efforts to produce these videos. Thank you, thank you. You are part of spreading the gospel around the world. If you're not a partner, prayerfully consider joining our efforts to help others the way you've been helped through the teachings. We can only imagine all the places God sends these videos once we post them online. But because it's filled with His Word, we know it's bringing light into dark places. Scan our QR code and give today. It's a decision that provides everlasting benefits to you and those waiting to see these messages. This program is made possible by the partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Don't spend your whole life doing something you can't stand. We should love our lives and we should enjoy our lives. And you can't do that if you're trying to be something other than what you are. I'm Joyce Meyer, and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. I want to talk to you this afternoon, just a little message that God dropped in my heart one afternoon, and I wrote it down called, Stay in Your Own Lane. You know, uh, if you think about driving a car, if you drift out of your lane, you're likely to get in a wreck or cause a wreck. And our lives are the same way. We need to know what our lane is and get in it and stay in it. And you know, when, when you find out what your sweet spot is or what it is that you're supposed to be doing, what you're gifted for and talented for, the devil will use any number of ways to try to get you out of it. And one of the things that happens is we begin to compare ourselves with other people and maybe we're not doing what they're doing and maybe it looks like what they're doing is more important or it's better than what we're doing and so we fall into the trap and I think everybody probably does this at least once in their life. For some people it's a lifetime problem of trying to be something that they're not. We think that we should be like this one or like that one. We should look like you or act like you or behave like you or be able to do what you do. And not only do we think that, but a huge mistake that human beings make is they think if they're good at something that everybody else should be good at that too. Come on now. How many of you get frustrated at other people that you're in a relationship with because they can't do it as fast as you do it or, or the way you do it or, or they can't do it at all? Maybe, maybe it's your children. Maybe it's somebody that you're married to. And we, in a marriage, you fall in love almost always with somebody that's different than you. And then as soon as you get married to them, you start trying to change them and make them like you are. And that's such a mistake because the reason why we're drawn to people that are not like us is because we need them. We have certain gifts, other people have certain gifts, and the way God wants his body to work is for each of us to bring what we have and work together without comparison or without thinking that our job determines our worth and value. Now, I'm going to say that again. Your job, your career, does not determine your worth and value. Amen? We have to stop looking at somebody and thinking because they seem to have what the world would deem as a more important job, and notice I said what the world would deem as a more important job, that that makes that person more important than them or better than them. The only thing that we need to do is find out what God wants us to do and do it, and we will get an equal reward. If I'm on the platform, because that's where God has given me the grace to be, and people listen to me speak, or if I'm a great singer, which I'm not, but there were people up here before me that were, and maybe then there's somebody else here that 
Their job is to stay here after all this is over and clean the place up. Maybe clean up the restrooms after us and sweep the place up. People tend to think, well, I'm just a janitor. Or I'm, I hate to hear a woman say, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. Let me tell you, the minute you say that, well, I'm, I'm just this, you're already saying that you're lowering yourself or what you think of yourself. And I'll tell you what, I mean, I remember being home with three kids. And I'll tell you what, that's not just in anything. I mean, that can turn you every which way but loose. And uh, it's, it, it's a big job. You're not just a stay-at-home mom. My gosh, you're a, a mother. You're taking care of women, take care of so many things. And they are so valuable and so, such multitaskers. They have tender hearts and they care about things. And so one of my goals today is I want everybody to go out of here today feeling good about yourself. And I want everybody to go out of here knowing that you don't have any reason or right to compare yourself with anybody else. And if you're doing this, I want you to stop comparing yourself with other people. You don't need to look like them, act like them, know what they know, do what they do. You need to just be you. And you don't need to apologize for being you. You need to be yourself because everybody else is already taken. Amen? So, if you get out of your lane and you're trying to run somebody else's race, you're going to sure end up with a wreck in your life. And I can tell you there are people sitting in here today and people listening and watching on different devices and the only reason why you're unhappy is because you're trying to be something you're not. <laughs> I mean, that is the only reason and you're, you're doing it for all the wrong reasons because you think you're supposed to, because people tell you you should, you ought to. It's amazing. Everybody that does something thinks everybody else ought to do it. But that's not the way it should be. You know, I used to sit in church and think, oh man, I wish I could sing like her. Boy, she's got... God, she got such a beautiful, I just wish that I could sing like her. And you know, God taught me a lesson. He said, you know, I put gifts in other people for you to enjoy, not for you to be jealous of. Now, I have a gift of communication, and I'm going to be able to communicate some things to you today about the Word of God that's going to help you understand it in a better way. So all you need to do is sit there and enjoy my gift. My gift causes me to have to work, but you get to enjoy it. And see, your gift causes you to have to work, but then I get to enjoy it. And I can tell you, before God can do very much with you, you're gonna have to come to terms with and get comfortable being yourself. Amen? Amen? You can't want to be, oh, I'm, I want to be just like you, or I'm going to be the next Joyce Meyer. Well, I hope not. <laughs> I mean, I hope there's only one of me, and whatever you do, I hope it's greater than anything that I've done. Don't settle for being like somebody else. Be the best version of yourself that you can be. And stop apologizing for yourself. Amen? Amen? Do what you're good at. Don't be afraid to just do what you're good at. I, I, don't, I don't know. Do we really believe God wants us to be happy? Do you really think he's going to force you into a career that's going to make you miserable? <laughs> Wonder how many people keep a job they hate just because 
They make a little more money than they would make if they took the job they'd really love to do. <laughs> Come on, I'm gonna say that again real slow. Do you know how many people hate their job? I hate my job. I hate my boss, I hate the people I work with. I hate the drive to work. God doesn't want us to hate our lives and hate what we do. So you say, well then why don't, you, why don't you get a different job? Why don't you do something else? Well, you know, I can't afford to give up the money. I make, I make good money. I'll tell you something, joy is a lot more important than money. Now, obviously, I mean, obviously we need money, but you'd be better off to find a way to cut your expenses and get a job where you can be happy than to spend your whole life doing something that you hate and dread. And I hope that I push somebody over the edge today and you just get enough guts to just quit that job you can't stand. I mean it. Don't spend your whole life doing something you can't stand. We should love our lives and we should enjoy our lives. And you can't do that if you're trying to be something other than what you are. God always gives us grace for our place. So many people don't seem to know what they're supposed to do with themselves in life. I just don't know what I'm called to do. You know, if you really don't know what you're called to do, just, just try a few things. And just find what you're comfortable with. Find what you enjoy. Find what you're good at. You know, when I fell in love with Jesus, I just wanted to serve God. I just wanted to work for him and do whatever I could do. And, and I was willing to try anything. I never was one of these kind of people that spent half my life waiting for God to tell me what I was called to do. I just got busy and if the church had a evangelism team and they wanted us to go out and the church I went to had a big street ministry in downtown St. Louis and they had this big thing about passing out tracks. I'll never forget those tracks. They, had a, they were white and yellow and had a little Jesus loves you smiley face on them and we would go into downtown St. Louis and give these tracks to strangers and say Jesus loves you, and I hated it. <laughs> you say, well, what kind of a thing is that to say, that you, you hated giving out gospel tracts? I hated it. It was embarrassing. I had to make myself do it. I didn't like it, and we went in the winter, and it was freezing cold, and I remember the first tract I tried to give to somebody, they slapped it out of my hand and said, I don't want that blankety blank blank thing. But then there's other people that are really anointed for that kind of evangelism. And I mean, you don't, you don't, if you're a sinner, you don't want to get in an elevator with them because you'll be saved by the time you get out. I tried door-to-door -door evangelism, and that was all I did was go door-to-door, -door -door and I let everybody else do all the talking. <laughs> but you get me up here, you can put me in front of 20 million people, and I'll be just as bold as I can be and say anything I believe God wants me to say. <laughs> so why could you get in front of 20 million people and talk, but you don't want to face down one person? I don't know. <laughs> and what's more, I don't care. All I know is God's got everything covered, and we don't have to all do everything. We just need to find out what we're good at and do that. And just because somebody else is comfortable doing that doesn't mean there's something wrong with me or something wrong with you because we don't want to do that. Are you there? I bet somebody just got set free. And so then, and I did the street thing for a long time, and it just, I just didn't enjoy it. I dreaded it coming, it just wasn't me. And then of course I felt guilty because I didn't like it. You know, I felt like I should like it, I should wanna do it. And I think sometimes as leaders, although we, we may not even realize what we're doing, 
they pushed that so hard at the church that I went to at that time about passing out these gospel tracts everywhere you went. I got to the point where I didn't even want to go out of the house <laughs> because I felt like that I, all I could do was face strangers and try to give them a gospel tract. I guess you're all bold and none of that would bother you, right? You just love to do that. And uh, so then I tried working in the nursery. They needed nursery workers. And it took about two weeks and me and the babies both knew I wasn't called to do that. <laughs> Come on. But then I got this idea that I was gonna get this group of women together and in one summer we were gonna put gospel tracts on cars and parking lots. And so I got a handful of women together because I'm a natural leader and I can motivate people to do things. And in, in just a couple of months, we put 10,000 gospel tracts under windshields on cars. And then I got called in before the elders of the church and got in trouble <laughs> because I did it without getting their permission. Now that's sometimes how religious hierarchy works. They're gonna stand and tell you what you ought to be doing, but then if you try to do what you feel comfortable doing or what you're called to do, then you get in trouble because you didn't get somebody's permission to go do it. Come on. So as leaders, we need to help people. Not, we need to not force them to do what we want them to do but we need to help them find what they're comfortable and gifted and anointed to do. And by the way, that's your job as a parent too. <laughs> Train up a child in the way they should go according to their individual gift or bent, the Amplified Bible says. Not try to fulfill your unfulfilled dreams through them and make them do what you never got a chance to do. Get in your own lane and stay there. Enjoy your life. You know, Jesus said that he died that we might have and enjoy our lives. I mean, that turned my world upside down when I saw that many, many, many years ago. We're not just here to make it through till Jesus comes back. We're supposed to enjoy this, enjoy our journey, enjoy everything that we do. Even Adam and Eve were told to enjoy all the food in the garden. We're supposed to enjoy one another. Enjoy the life that God tried to give us. Romans 12, three through eight. For by the grace given unto me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned to him. Now, this is a good message in itself because it's saying, okay, whatever gift you have, whatever grace God has given you to do what you do, don't make the mistake of thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to by thinking that it's you doing it because it's not you doing it, it's God doing it through you. That's exactly why no matter what we do, our who is what's important. It's who we are in Christ, and everybody in Christ is equal no matter what you do or don't do. Amen? And if you, if you don't realize that what you're good at, you're good at because God has enabled you and gifted you to be good at it, you will fall into that trap of thinking that everybody else should be able to do what you do. <laughs> anybody know what I mean? Yes. Do you ever have anybody that's just gotten aggravated with you because you couldn't do what they do? Yes. Yeah, come on, I'm gonna find somebody to talk to in here. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine how it must mess a kid up if they have a parent who is constantly railing on them because that kid can't do what they do or what that parent thinks they should do? Or the worst thing, comparing your kids with each other. 
Oh, why can't you be like your sister? And why can you know? Why aren't you as smart as your brother? Don't ever compare your kids with one another. Matter of fact, go to the other extreme of telling them you're not supposed to be alike. God's created us all uniquely different. Come on, I hated myself for too many years and I finally got over it and I want to help you get over it too. For as in one body, we have many members and the members do not all have the same function. <laughs> no matter how bad you want to, you just can't do everything that everybody else can do. Come on. We don't come to church to impress each other. Let me tell you something. As long as you feel the need to impress somebody, you are never free. Never free. You're only free when you can be completely what God has gifted you to be, not apologize for it, not compare yourself, and I don't need to try to impress you. That's why I can enjoy what I'm doing and just love you. And I really just feel in my bones that somebody is just going to get a breakthrough today. That I mean, if you're going to get it, I'm okay. <laughs> I am okay. There is nothing wrong with me because I am not you. There's nothing wrong with me because I weigh 10 more pounds than you do. And no matter what I do, I can't lose it. Don't you love those people who forget to eat? I may forget a lot of things, but I never forget to eat. Amen? One person can cut soda out of their diet and lose 50 pounds and Somebody else can live on bread and water and gain weight. <laughs> Pressing on. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ... <laughs> Everybody shout out, I'm different. I'm different. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. And let me just say this. You can have 10 people that have the same gift, but the strength of that gift may be different in each one. <laughs> you may have 10 people that have a lovely voice, but one who just is really just like stands out. You have one pastor that can pastor a church of 300, and then you have somebody else that can minister to the whole world. And boy, we get ourselves in trouble. And I love this part of these verses. It says, whatever your gift is, come on, give yourself to it. Come on, whatever your gift is, give yourself to it. In other words, focus on that. Why do we keep trying to be good at things we're not good at? You know, if you're a two at something, you can struggle all your life and maybe become a four. But if you're an eight at something, you can focus on that and work with God and you can become a 10 real quick. The way to stand out is not to be halfway, maybe a little bit decent at 20 things, but it's to take two or three things that you're really gifted for and pour yourself into that and become outstanding at those things. You don't have to do what everybody else does. You don't have to do what everybody else does.
When we start to compare ourselves with others, we're in trouble right away. That means we're taking our eyes off of the Lord and putting it on ourselves and just becoming miserable. We need to remember, God has a plan for each of us. He has something beautiful for you. And when you seek Him above all else and rest in the fact that you can trust Him to lead you and guide you, then peace, joy, and fulfillment will follow. You don't have to look at everybody else. The only person that can run your race is you. No one else can do it. The world needs you. John 10.10 says that Jesus came so we might have and enjoy our life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Doesn't that sound great? So you can start your journey of happiness today with Joyce's book, Enjoy Your Journey. This little book is so good and it's yours for your gift of any amount today. In this, you will learn ways to overcome regrets, to experience simplicity in life and find joy during times of waiting so you can really enjoy where you are on the way to where you're going. In this great little book, Joyce addresses things like legalism and breaking down the barriers in our journey with Jesus. What the Bible says about being childlike and protecting that child within us and freedom in relationships that might be hindering your joy. Life should be a celebration. So get this, enjoy your journey and choose to find the hidden treasures in everyday life with God's help. And remember, your gift of any amount will not only provide this book, but it will also help to spread the gospel and help people all over the world. Another great way to enjoy your journey. We are waiting to hear from you right now. Thank you so much for joining us today and remember to celebrate and enjoy the good plan God has for your life. Life is a journey with many ups and downs and it's up to us to learn to enjoy it. John 10.10 10 tells us that Jesus came so that we might have and enjoy an abundant life. Discover biblical principles for living a fulfilling and joy-filled life with Joyce's small book, Enjoy Your Journey. Start enjoying where you are on the way to where you're going. Learn to press into God's incredible purpose for your future. You don't have to settle for a mediocre life if you put these practical principles into action. This book is available for your gift of any amount. Contact us today. Visit online at JoyceMeyer.org or call 1-800-709-2895. If you want to make a real difference in the world and share the love of Jesus, consider being a medical volunteer with Hand of Hope. Here are three great reasons to do it. To learn about a new culture. You get back far more than you ever give. There is no greater joy. So make sure you go to JoyceMeyer.org right now and find out how you can be a medical volunteer. We'll see you there. Get your daily dose of encouragement with the Joyce Meyer Ministries app. Catch up on seven days of enjoying everyday life episodes. Grow deeper in God's word with the daily devotional and question of the day. And enjoy all your favorite teachings from Joyce in your digital library. Find all this and more with the Joyce Meyer Ministries app. Search Joyce Meyer in your app store and download it today. The 2024 Love Life Women's Conference in Tampa, Florida this fall is sold out. But no worries, you don't have to miss out on any of the exciting things in store. You can be part of every aspect of the event, the inspiration, the worship, the teaching, all the fun from the comfort of home. It's At Home with Joyce from the Love Life Women's Conference. Join us for this live online event. Register today at joycemeyer.org slash lovelife. We hope you enjoy today's program. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org. This program has been made possible by the partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.